man lives in the confused mainstream media environment of what he believes to be reality. But there is unseen by most an Ubo world, a place that is just as real, only more brightly lit. A smash side. So we're looking at the sun on 171 angstroms as this active region sets. We're still at a pretty low activity state here, although there has been a slight uptick in the solar wind density as expected. The main feature being that very long coronal hole, which is associated with the South Pole magnetic field region. It has been magnetically connected to the Earth for a large portion of the last 24 hours. And there are the magnetic lines. And while we're on that subject, let's look at the uh, Gong 2 line of sight coronal hole plot here. So you can see the way that coronal hole plays into the environment. You can see highly associated with the South Pole. Keep in mind this data is two hours and six minutes old. And we will show you the top view line of sight ecliptic plane field plot in a moment. All right, we better move it here because we've got 23 tabs open. So looking at spaceweather.com. They got a nice article here, a month without sunspots. We're only two days away, folks, before an entire month with zero sunspots. By the way, 10.7 centimeter radio flux, still at 71, and still above forecasts. And for that, we thank you. Not only the sun, but also our viewers. So let's head to spaceweathernews.com and look at some more data here. You can see a couple little x-ray flares there. And we do often see these coming out of active regions because of the angular emissivity. The sun doesn't emit in a straight line, folks. It emits at an angle. And that's why you often see, uh, you often see sunspots hitting the Earth with x-rays when it's very close to the edge of the solar disk. Now, if you look at the phi angle here, you see the phi angle has been riding at near 180 degrees there for a large portion of the past 24 hours. Surprisingly, we don't see any big earthquakes, which means the drought continues, which means the watch continues. Magnetometer is still looking smooth. KP index is back to zero. I did want to take a moment to look at the Cygnus forecast here because you can see the coronal mass ejection on this. It does actually affect the uh, the current sheet over there. It caused a huge perturbation uh, in the in the magneto tail of Stereo A, as you can see. I'm sorry, that's not Stereo A. That's Venus. But you can also see that it missed the Earth to the west. So, interesting little plasma bubble there, just got blasted out into space. Have a nice journey. Here's the electron flux. We see a dip in this again, as at the same time we're seeing a uh, an increase in the solar proton density. Um, back to this, uh, you see there's a couple little upticks there, which happened yesterday in the solar wind density, and the speed has come up at the same time. Now, throughout the day today, we're expecting the density to increase. And then around midnight, we're expecting the speed to increase and the density to drop back off again. No charging hazards. And the F2 layer is looking very discharged, actually. Uh, even in the under the sun portion, quite discharged. And this area is looking pretty discharged, too. So there's going to be a big disparity as that moves in. And there are the Borealis and Australis Aurora forecasts. 
Next, we'll go back to the gong too. Look at the top view ecliptic field plane plot here. No real magnetic instability to be predicted there. And looking at the last frame, only minor perturbations in the magnetometer are expected. Next, we've got your standard issue magnetosphere movies here. First, looking at the velocity. Next, we've got the density. Don't be dense, people. Realize that the white part is low density and the blue part is high density. Pretty steady stream there. Corroborating the solar wind data. Next, we got the pressure. It's going to refresh. Watch. I guarantee it. Is it going to do the whole run? See, it refreshed. All right, here we go. Pressure pretty low here. And again, we see a little higher pressure in the magnetotail region than in the bow shock. Let's bring it a little closer to home here with your geospace ground perturbations map. First, looking at the poles, where the sun's field aligned currents arrive. Do see some minor shifting around. But like I said, pretty minor. Here it is from the globe. Remember, this is looking at changes in the magnetic field B. And we see some considerable strength over Siberia there. Not as much movement toward India for the South Pole as we've seen. Moving on. How about the total electron content? Let that one play through. This is a great movie here to show you the South Atlantic anomaly there off the east coast of South America. See, there's always a little, there's always a little squiggle in that electron content there. Also, to me, it looks like there's an there's an anomaly over India also, uh, but we see that every day on this map as well. Here's a quick volcano rundown. Volcanoes of today. We got Karimsky producing a, a 10,000 foot ash plume there. Sakura Jima with a 7,000 foot ash plume. Mount Ibu with a 10,000 foot ash plume. Dukono, 8,000 foot ash plume. New emissions at Fuego. Sporadic puffs of volcanic ash at Sabancaya. Planch on Petaroa, 14,000 foot ash plume. And Nevados de Chilean back to producing intermittent emissions of gases. Next, we'll go to quakes.globalincidentmap.com where we see the 6 and 7 magnitude earthquake drought has continued. You've been drawing this in every day. These are your earthquake watch areas. As when you have an earthquake drought, it always ends. And it always ends with the type of earthquake that you're expecting, a magnitude 6 or 7 in those warning zones. Let's do the rundown for the past, what do we got, 10 hours here. We got El Salvador with a 4.5, which is, by the way, right at the northern tip of the earthquake watch zone. Chile with a 4.6, which is right in the middle of the earthquake watch zone. There's that location. Four point one in Indonesia, four point five in Afghanistan at depth. We've been seeing a lot in that town of is it pronounced Jom? Anyway, there's a location of that. 
near Tajikistan, it looks like. Also see a 4.1 in Alaska. Yeah, so we're still seeing a drought here, folks. There's been a major drought of 6 and 7 magnitude earthquakes. You would see another one on Chile there. That's the most recent, right in the middle of the earthquake watch zone. So if you're in any of those earthquake-prone areas, please have a plan. Because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Next, let's go to Zooniverse.org for the Galaxy Zoo Project, where citizen scientists classify galaxies doing real astronomy work in one of the largest citizen science projects in the world. So let's classify a galaxy. Ah, what do we have on there? I think we might have an edge on disk, folks. This is close enough that we're going to call that an edge on disk. It's not perfectly edge on, but it's pretty close. Does it have a central bulge? Well, you bet it does. Is it boxy? It actually is a little bit boxy. So we're going to say boxy, which makes it, I think, a little more rare. And there is a minor disturbance over there, it looks like possibly interacting with another galaxy or a jet. So we'll just say uh, minor disturbance. And do we see irregular features? I'm just going to say a dust lane. And that's pretty much it. Consider that galaxy classified. Head to Galaxy Zoo at Zooniverse.org. Identify that structure as an elliptical galaxy. Next, let's go to Zero Hedge. Oh yeah. Little article on Zero Hedge. We'll just read you the headline and not give you any opinion. Bernie calls for a socialist, quote, revolution, end quote, in America. All right. Way to go, Bernie. Sounds like a great idea. Here's another zero hedge. China plans to plans to build space solar station. What does that mean? Like the SDO? Oh, no. No, no. Nothing like the SDO, folks. China wants to put a power station in space. And then they want to beam power back to the planet. So I'm, I'm sure nobody will have any problems with that. By the way, they're planning to send the electricity that they gather from the sun back to the Earth in a concentrated microwave or laser beam. So let us know what you think about that in the comments, folks. I'm sure you're not going to mind a powerful energy beam blasting all the way through the Earth's ionosphere, are you? Like, I'm sure a microwave or laser beam wouldn't create any, you know extremely powerful and unnatural ionization pathways above the planet, would it? No, it's impossible. Pardon the sarcasm. All right, let's look at one at universetoday.com. Looking at a part of India here, suggesting that massive volcanic eruptions 66 million years ago happened exactly, almost exactly, when the dinosaurs died off. So anyway, it's another article about catastrophe cycles. This one suggesting that perhaps volcanoes did it. They're looking at some uh, layered structures of igneous rock around India. And there are some other interesting ones around the world. Here's a map. Somewhere's a map. So those purple areas, such as that one on Russia, this one on Iceland, these are areas where we have these large igneous provinces where there's giant areas where lava just poured out of the ground and then settled in layers. We'll leave links to this and all other sites we visit. Here's an article blaming carbon dioxide for fewer clouds. Um, apparently, if you get carbon dioxide levels high enough, it starts to break up Stratocumulus clouds, which are the exact clouds that make the planet warmer due to cosmic ray flux. I mean, I'm sorry, that make the planet colder 
due to cosmic ray flux, these low-lying stratocumulus clouds are the exact things that form the troposphere uh, due to ionization pathways increasing due to cosmic ray flux. Anyway, we'll leave links to the article. Um, what they're saying is this is yet another way that carbon dioxide is going to warm the atmosphere because they're trying to figure out some way to get carbon dioxide to warm the planet without the highly disproven radiative greenhouse effect. Yes, since it you know violates the laws of thermodynamics and all. How about a science history article on cosmosmagazine.com? Electro, the smoking robot. He's just having a quick smoke before going on stage in 1954, folks. Man, talk about the space age. Are they allowed to smoke on the International Space Station? Yet another way Facebook is spying on you. Not only are they spying at you through their own app, even if you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook is spying at you through things like fitness and health apps. Yes. Do you, are you one of our female viewers who uses a health app to do stuff like follow your menstrual cycles? Well, if you've got Facebook, it might be monitoring that data. Facebook is interested in when you ovulate, ladies. Anyway, we'll leave links to that article also. Facebook. The spying network. By the way, we do have a Minds.com page. Check us out. Minds.com slash Masomash. The social media network that will not track or spy on you. It also won't censor you, by the way. Now, we got a Russian telescope doing some great work here, observing high-resolution structure of blazar jets. Now, for those of you not aware, um, a blazar is an active galactic nucleus where the one pole is pointed directly at the Earth. So it gives us uh, a look right down one of its Z fields. And so they're noticing some uh, interesting stuff going on in there, some striations in the jet. Um, which are not caused by anything like gravity, but caused by internal structures in the plasma. Well, that's what they're caused by. I'm not sure if the article concludes that, but that's what they're caused by. So, yeah, it's a good article. And it looks like they're moving in the right direction. Thanks, Russia and the Spectre R. Investigating S50716 plus 71. And by the way, if you're not aware, we'll leave links to this article also. This is what the sun looks like if you were looking down at the sun's north pole. Seems kind of weird, right? Now, Electric Universe people would be expecting this, that it would look like this, uh, basically like a cylinder, uh, because of the way the, the way the fields are aligned. But anyway, that's an interesting photo. Just let that sink in a minute. That's what the sun looks like from the north pole. By the way, if you're interested in the orientation of things in the solar system and in the galaxy, here's another article on physicsforums.com. And this article's got several different diagrams of how the sun and the earth and so on move around in reference to things like the galactic plane and celestial north and all that sort of stuff. I know we've got a lot of viewers that are interested in this sort of uh, galactic geography so check out that article we'll leave links to that as well I'll show you a value-added service here a quick glance at the US Doppler radar map so if you're watching our video first thing in the morning at least you know what's going on in the radar some lake effect snow there and some snow across the northern central portion some rain around the Gulf heavy rains in Northern California and some snow in the, near the California-Nevada border. By the way, we do feature original music almost entirely. That Tales from the Dark Side uh, theme, that's that we didn't make that, but if you head to soundclick.com slash goldencatproductions, I think there are 14 songs there. You can stream them, you can download them. I think they're 99 cents a piece. Have a listen. We're moving up in the charts big time. And lastly, let's just head to Tropical Tidbits here to look at the 250 millibar wind 
to show you what the jet stream is looking like these days. And keep in mind, this is a forecast which goes all the way into March. Just speed that up so you just have an idea of what this meridional jet stream flow looks like. This is associated with a weak magnetosphere. And you can see there's portions where the jet stream's flowing backwards. It's going, you know, east to west instead of west to east in certain places. Um, normally this is more like this. And when you see these wild turns like this, that's called meridional jet stream flow, and that's when you get cold air sucked down south, and you get equatorial air pushed up north. It doesn't mean global warming, folks, and it ain't from CO2. And let's take a look back at the sun here in 94 angstroms. Keep in mind the 94 angstrom scope takes five times as many pictures as most of the other ones. Let's see if we can get any insight into that coronal mass ejection that happened. And see if we can see anything that we couldn't see otherwise about that active region. Again, you do see this, this emissivity because sunspots, when sunspots emit, they don't just emit straight out, they emit at angles. So, another feature that suggests that the sun is made of condensed matter and not a gaseous plasma. Looks like there's some magnetic streamers coming out there at the end. In any case, thanks for watching. I've got to close this thing out here because it's getting a little long. Thanks subscribers, thanks donors. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. We'll be doing it all again tomorrow. Remember, when you're illuminating the sun, somehow, don't drink. But if you drink, illuminate the sun. Illuminate people's understanding of the sun. Share with your friends on social media. Just don't drive. Seriously, don't drive.